Hi, my name is Michael Corsini. I'm a musician and an artist, specifically a painter, but also a puppeteer. Uh, we, I am a husband and father of five children. We live here in uh, Northeast Pennsylvania. I am really doing everything possible to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ through um, all the various forms of art that God has given me, especially um, music, where I think music really does open the heart to receive God's uh, word his mercy. When I was a kid, uh, I grew up in, in the Lutheran church where I went to Sunday school occasionally and actually was confirmed in the Lutheran church in middle school. But shortly after that, I really just fell away from the faith. My family really wasn't one that took prayer and our faith life really seriously. During that time, I had come in contact uh, with uh, pornography at a young age where it you know, got me into bad relationships and a pattern of life that was really unhealthy. From there, I went to uh, Ringling School of Art and Design, which was a, an art school in Sarasota, Florida. It was a feeder school for animation for you know, studios like Disney and DreamWorks and Pixar, which is what my dream was at that time in my life. And so while I was there, I would frequent the art museum at, in Sarasota called the Ringling Museum of Art. These two places were where my artwork really began to blossom and flourish. It was also the place where I would begin to meet Christ. I find you indwelling. So I was walking through this hallway of Rembrandt paintings that I had been down so many times before, and I stopped in front of an image of Our Lady called the Blue Madonna. It just struck my heart. It's the best way I can describe it. Your refuge. Make my heart. It's a simple image, an image where Our Lady is almost completely in darkness, and you see just the, the blue of her veil coming down around her face and just a sliver of light over her, over the bridge of her nose and down her face. And uh, the most astonishing thing happened. I, uh, I began to weep like really cry, like uh, like ugly cry, you know? And uh, I sat down on a bench and I just sat in front of this image of Our Lady and I thought, this is the most beautiful woman that I've ever seen in my life. I am yours, you are After all the years of uh, pornography addiction and all the bad relationships here in front of me for the first time, was the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life, and it made me cry. I sat there, and at some point I got up, I went to the gift shop and bought an image, or print of that image, and brought it home. I placed the image inside my bedroom in, in the apartment I was living in with our fraternity, and uh, shortly thereafter, about three or four months after, I st started having this really intense desire to go to church. Not just to go to church, but to go to a Catholic church, which again was really strange because I had never been in a Catholic church. But I would make an excuse to my buddies that I was going out shopping on Sunday morning, and I would sneak in the back of our local Catholic church. I'd walk up the steps into the choir loft, and I'd kind of sit in the corner hoping nobody would see me, and I would just watch the Mass. And I did that until I graduated college. That was the sort of shocking beginning of my conversion experience into coming into the church and really beginning to understand my faith and who God was calling me to be. It was a song I called Take Me Higher. You take me higher than these pale blue skies. The first time I ever performed a song that I wrote was this song, and it was in church uh, during a time of prayer. And I was so nervous. 
I got up there and I was shaking like a leaf. I thought I was never gonna get this song out of me. And then here I am, basically going into a complete and total panic attack for no reason that I could figure. And everybody is standing there, all kind of waiting to pray. And I step up to the microphone and uh, I just remember saying something to the Lord, like, I know you got me, I'm just gonna do this. Something simple like that. The second I stepped into the song, all that nervous energy kind of went away. And I just sang my guts out for the Lord. I don't know what missing you would be. And sang the song that I had come out of my conversion experience. It was, it was a song that was pretty deeply emotional and was talking about how, how far I had kind of sank and how I, I, I desperately wanted the Lord to bring me out of it. After it was over, I remember I put the guitar down and nobody did anything. There was complete silence. And I thought for a second, I was like, oh my God, they hated it. They hated it. <laughs> they don't want to say anything and they hated it. And I saw people weeping. And uh, I realized that this song that I had written from my own prayer had actually touched somebody else. You know, my friends and I were just getting into a lot of trouble, you know. Uh, some of my friends had contracted STDs. One of my friends had had an abortion. And I remember thinking as I was writing the song, like, Lord, Everybody I know is so mixed up, you know, and so am I. And uh, I feel so lost. It was, a, it was a song kind of a desperation, just crying out to the God, please pull me higher out of this. One of the most important things happened, and it was a movie called Toy Story, the first computer animated movie, and what that spelled for me was kind of the beginning of the end uh, for hand-drawn animation, stop-motion animation, and animatronic puppetry. As the years went by in school, it became a little bit more and more devastating to me because I could see it beginning to happen already that these uh, companies that I had desired to work for my entire life were no longer interested in guys like me. And so I found myself kind of in a dark place where I knew that as I began to come closer and closer to graduation, that the dream that I had had my entire life was most likely not going to come true. And I found myself really in a, in a place that was dark. And you mix that in with um, partying, you mix that in with uh, a lifetime of being really absorbed in, uh, in pornography and bad relationships, and it was just a a complete recipe for uh, depression. Uh, the artwork that I was doing was, you know, a lot of animation, stop motion animation, puppetry, work like that. It was beautiful in its own way, but I really wanted to do something that would serve the Lord particularly. So I began to do things like uh, statue restoration and painting restoration because I thought, okay, that's a good way to begin to, to serve the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And it was really in that time that I began to work with a sacred art uh, and restoration company. And during that time, I was able to just spend a lot of time in churches. <laughs> so I was literally in churches doing uh, glass etchings or painting ceilings, or performing music for prayer. I find you God began to speak to me in a way that draw me towards uh, the priesthood. At that time in my life, I began to, to look into that vocation as well, and I became a Franciscan friar of the Renewal in New York. And I remained there for five years in early discernment during that time that my vocation was actually to marriage. Again, another startling revelation of the Lord. Lamb of God, my life is not my own. I've always loved puppetry. I've always loved the art form because it's a way of kind of uh, disappearing into the character. The reason for puppets as an art form is uh, that it really, it kind of disarms you, you know? like. You're, you're looking at something that couldn't possibly be real, and yet 
uh, it's animated in such a way that you, you come to believe that this guy could be having a cup of coffee with you in the morning, for instance. And uh, I find that that's really disarming um, for, for a lot of people and that you can reach uh, the, the heart uh, this creature here, this blue bird, he's going to be struggling with anxiety and, and stress it's so much that his feathers will be falling out. But I think it's going to give us an opportunity to really speak to people um, in a humorous way about the things that we struggle with. It's really, you know, a way of imparting God's joy uh, to people. Of One of the most beautiful things about being a Christian artist is that you realize that God has called you to a particular task. And the task is unique in the sense that you are participating with him in a co-laboring to bring beauty to the world. Um, one of the songs that I love that came out of a collaboration between me and my wife is a song called Waiting in the Wound. She was on retreat, on a women's retreat, and during that time uh, she had this meditation that uh, something had happened to her in her life that was deeply painful and she was always wondering where was the Lord you know when this thing happened to me why was I alone how could you abandon me or leave me Green of wheat that falls on my waiting leg. and during one of her moments of prayer uh, in adoration she said that she had a really powerful awareness of literally like where God was in the moment of her own wounding. Christ does, in his mystery and mercy, wait for us to encounter him in that place where we are the most wounded. In some way, the place that we're the most wounded is the place of encounter with Christ. And so my wife and I, we kind of sat down and we kind of worked through these lyrics together but from her prayer and then I would add to it. And this kind of dialogue and dance began to happen between us of, of our own personal experiences and how the Lord is beginning to heal us. That song in particular, of all the music that I, I play for prayer, across the board, um, penetrates the most hearts, I think. It's this awareness that He has not only been present during the time of our particular woundings, whatever that may be, but that He He's mysteriously uh, wounded along with us. And that, for me, is a continual healing. The Lord is constantly healing me through words like that song, that He's waiting in the wound, that He is the wounded one waiting in my wound for me to encounter Him, for me to just finally let go and open up to Him and give Him my wounds.
we're living in simultaneously the best time in history to be an artist and also the worst time. It's the best time in the sense that you're really able as an artist to really get out there in front of people and find your people, people who really do appreciate um, your work. I think it is also the worst time to be an artist. Uh, it, and it's because our modern culture tends to view art as disposable. John Paul II has a beautiful letter to, to artists that is so dear to me that I feel like my vocation sprung out of that letter. One of the most difficult things as an artist right now is the battle that's being waged constantly on the, on the Christian artists, and it's spiritual, and it's real. Hey, sweetie. Hey, sweetie, you're home. How has it been? I was good. Heart made of stone. My beautiful wife, Jessie, Maria, and Isabella, Joseph, Katerina, and Chiara. Parched in dry land, you search and you. Tired and weary of searching for these Show me who I am I'm afraid of where I've been So give me You know, John Paul II said that artists in particular are called to be emissaries, you could say ambassadors of beauty in the world. That is, that artists are called to be a missionary of beauty, to take God's own beauty and present it to the world. The beauty of the Lord to overwhelm us as artists. Once that's been done, and we've thoroughly taken that in, to then give that back to the world, but transformed in the beauty that Christ gives to us. But what God does is give a gift that we could never, ever comprehend to others. He wants to be given, and he desires for us artists and us families and whatever shape our family takes to be a gift given over for others.
lot of hopes and dreams for the future here in our family. All of it really revolves around God's healing and mercy. One of the things is something called the Wellspring Foundation for Sacred Art. And the idea is that a way of renewal for poor communities, specifically poor parishes, where it's difficult to find means to bring in beautiful and talented musicians, uh, events for prayer, and especially uh, for creating sacred works of art. And you were there when I saw light. And you were there when I brought fire. Our second most beautiful dream is something called the Little Way Homestead Show, involving uh, puppets and our homestead little farm here. The idea of that show is that we're gonna be teaching and inspiring families to learn how to live a life where home is really the central place in your life. Begin to show the world what that could possibly look like with their own family and in their own homes. John Paul II, always was saying that we really do need to use all means possible and necessary to reach people with the gospel. And so my From the Wellspring podcast and these evenings of night prayer that I have live on Facebook and YouTube gives uh, me an opportunity to really reach people who might be on the fringes or people just scrolling, you know, to give them a, an opportunity just to stop and receive the moment God's really giving them and to be aware that His presence is real Lord, fill this night with your radiance. May we sleep in peace and rise with joy to welcome the light of a new day in your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the all-powerful Lord grant us a restful night and a peaceful death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Let the Lord fill you with his peace until we see you again tomorrow night. God bless you. Protect us, Lord, as we stay away. Watch over us as we sleep. That awake we may keep watch with Christ sleep rest in his peace problems worries sadness are you seeking solutions bible says do not be anxious about anything instead pray about everything choose faith over fear